What's going on out there? How are you doing? This is August Crenshaw. You are at my YouTube channel, Real Talk for Business Mastery. We got to talk about things the way that they really are. What's going on inside of your head? What are you thinking about? We got to talk about it because we need your mind sharp and crystal clear in order for you to move forward in your financial endeavors. If you're an entrepreneur, you have some type of dream in mind. It's always the extra stuff that gets us distracted and keeps us from thriving at our fullest capability. So I'm here again to talk to you about something so that you can go from here to here. Now, today's topic, I have a question. What are you willing to give up in order for your dream to come to pass? I mean, what 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 would you just uh, let go of? I mean, relationships, houses, jobs. What are you willing to let go of in order for your dreams to happen? And I know a lot of people, they're like, I'm stuck. I can't move forward. And it's because you've got this anchor. you got these things that are holding you down. And so you're constantly having one of these and you're not supposed to. So I want to tell you about a move that I made that made all of the difference between me exploding into who I am as opposed to staying who I used to be. Now, for those of you that have been following me for a second, you already know that I'm a cosmetologist. We talked about this in the last video and I talked about me designing jewelry and how that ended up not being my real passion. Well, let me tell you how that turned around and worked for my good. So you're getting an extra nugget in here. Because a lot of times we look at our failures and that's how we judge ourselves. And, you know, you've heard people like John C. Maxwell say, fail forward. You hear other people talk about how failure is a sign of success and so on and so forth. Well, that so-called, you know, decision that didn't work out, it did work out for my good. So let me tell you how I literally left my city and all of my material possessions behind in order to get where I am right now doing what I love. So fast forward, if you didn't watch the other video where I was talking about knowing the difference between your passion and your ability, some of this stuff may be kind of like, huh, go back and watch that video. And then you'll be like, oh, so that's what she's talking about. So anyway, this is what goes down, right? I go and I tell my clients, hey, I'm not going to do hair anymore. I want to go and I want to switch things up and I'm going to sell the jewelry full time. Now my clients, most of them have been with me anywhere from five up until that 20 years that I had been a cosmetologist. And so when I told them that I was getting ready to take on another business endeavor, they were like, man, we kind of had a feeling it was coming because you're having so much success with it. Go for it. Well, what ended up happening, I'm from St. Louis. I ain't crapping on my city, but I always like to say that St. Louis sometimes is kind of plagued by the state motto, the show me state. They always want you to show them something, but you can't show faith. You know what I'm saying? You can't show vision. And it, it's one of those places where you kind of feel like you're a crab in a barrel and there's a lot of, you know, hating, undercover racism, you know, stuff like that, discrimination. It's there. If you live there, you know it. You know, Mike Brown didn't happen there for no reason. I know stuff goes down everywhere, but just real talk. I'm just, it, 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 it is what it is, you know, but that's not where this, this video is going. So anyway, I'm sitting there and I tell my husband one day, I'm like, hey, you know, I have this epiphany. I think we should leave St. Louis. Do you still want to go? He's like, yeah. And it was crazy because it happened like 72 hours after I sent out a mass message to my client saying, I'm not going to be able to do your hair anymore because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. We're going to have our one-on-one -on -one conversations about this and I'll cycle everybody out. Well, I thought that I was going to phase them all out over six months to a year and make this transition. But in 72 hours from letting go of that anchor of my business. So that was one anchor. I had a very well established business. My destiny was calling me and pulling me to something else, but I was never going to get there because I was too attached to something that I had established and I had to let it go. So designing the jewelry opened up my mind to something new and beautiful about myself and I wanted to explore that. Letting go of that anchor also allowed me to let go of the anchor of my hood, you know, where I came from. And my husband said he was ready to go and we were just looking at St. Louis and we're thinking I'm going to do this jewelry thing and I need to be in a city with more diversity and, uh, you know, so we like, let's get out of here. We didn't know exactly where we were going to go, but within about 72 more hours, 
I woke up one morning and just randomly started looking for houses for rent in Houston. Told him, he was like, I'm good, let's go. And from there, that was April the 15th. We told our friends and family, hey, guess what? We're moving, we're going to Houston. They were like, huh? Really, when? You know, he got another job, he transferred? Nah, we'll be gone by the summer. And everybody looked at us like we were crazy. And I was like, "We, what are you gonna do with your house? We're gonna sell it. Really, August, in the market here? Yeah, we're gonna sell it. I was so laser focused and my husband was right there on the same page with me. You want to know what we did? Within two weeks, we had already gotten everything set up for a moving sale. Every non-essential thing that we didn't need, we got rid of it. If it wasn't sold, we gave it to the Goodwill. Things that were too old, we threw them in the trash and our house was empty. We found us a realtor at the beginning of May. She told us a few little things to do to kind of give it a little extra sprucing. Put the house on the market at the end of May and found a buyer in, tw in 72 hours. And basically the rest is history. Now here's a funny twist. While we were doing all of this stuff because I was busy moving, I was still taking care of my clients, getting the house together, doing the moving sale. I had a, uh, at that time like a nine, 10 year old, I was homeschooling. I'm doing all of these different things. I was getting super duper tired and I had no idea why. And I had a procedure done. I wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant. Guess who was 22 and a half weeks pregnant after the house was under contract. The house got put under contract like June the 2nd. I found out on June the 23rd or the 26th, something like that. Well, guess what? It was good that I found out later because my husband had an excellent job with excellent benefits. And if I had known that I was pregnant, that's another thing that would have helped me. Oh, the birth of the baby and the family members and such and such seeing their grandchild or their great grandchild and these wonderful benefits. And I love my doctor, but we was we were already all in. And it was like, we didn't sell up all this stuff and get rid of all this stuff to go and go find an apartment and start all over again in St. Louis. And to top it off, when our house was supposed to close, it didn't. But we had, and we know that that's the reality of, you know, selling the house, but we were like, we were, we were ready to move. And to make a longer story shorter, we got on that highway on the 19th of July, and by the 20th, we were in Houston. And our house did close the next week after. And so that even is another nugget. Where's your faith? How sold out are you on what you believe in? Because people say, mm -mm, that wasn't wise. I wouldn't do that because you know anything could happen. The bank could decide not to fund. The buyer could change their mind and just lose their pay. We didn't care about any of that. We were so laser focused on what we wanted. Nothing was going to stop us from getting it. So we were even willing to take a risk with starting our lives all the way over by letting all of that go. And you want to know the beautiful thing about all of it is that when I got to Houston, for those of you that listened to the last video, you realize that I had went through some transitions and I realized what my real calling was and that was to be a coach. And it wasn't until after I got to Houston that I started thinking about all of my clients that called me their freaking coach anyway. But here's the thing, that terminology, it may, it's used a little bit more now, but St. Louis is it's Midwest. It's not even just my city. Midwest gets everything slow. They get the music slow, the fashion slow, the lingo slow, everything slow. That's just what it is. And life coach, you know, that all of that stuff, it, it wasn't as readily used. And so once again, I was in an, in an environment that wasn't conducive to what my calling was, what my gift was. And by being in an atmosphere where like that's expected, you know, coaches, you know, meetups, do meetups together and stuff like that here in Houston, my total atmosphere, it changed, which means what came to me changed and how I received things and how I saw them. So what are you willing to give up? Some of you know, you just need to leave your city. Some of you know you need to leave relationships. Some of you need to eliminate and leave your debt. You have ways to get out of your debt in order to free up money and free up time to run your business. What are you willing to let go of? So I'm interested. What are your struggles? What are you holding on to that you know you need to let go of? Talk to me about it. And I gave you this video, it should have given you some inspiration and motivation, definitely should have given you some food for thought, 
but maybe your situation is a little bit more complicated and you have a little bit, you know, a few, a few more questions to ask. Put them in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. Like I said, you put the comment down there. If it's simplistic enough, bam, give you an answer right away. If it's a little bit more complicated, hey, your topic may just be worthy of its own video where we break that thing all the way down. So this is August Crenshaw. I am excited always to be here with you. Look, if you're loving this information and you want more of it, I also do the same thing in a Facebook group and I'm doing posting and a lot of other things and way more engagement. So I'm going to put the link down in the bottom. And if you you want to you can you know pull up the comp you can pull up the description you can click the link and come and join me in the real talk for Facebook for business mastery but let me explain something to you it's a serious community of people so if you don't really have any entrepreneurial ambitions you're not going to participate and you're just a lurking type I ain't got no problem with lurking but you can go lurk my personal file as fast as you get enrolled into my private uh, business page where I'm giving you a ton of nuggets for I mean my private closed group page if you are just, you know, I don't know what the heck you're doing, it won't be, I, no offense, but I will put you out. So please, only for the serious minded, only for people that are looking for opportunities to go forward, all right? So it's been a pleasure talking to you. I could ramble all day long. I'm going to leave this right here. I cannot wait to see your comments. Put them below.